Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about the smoke glass wolves. All right, well, now what on earth are the smoke glass wolves? All right, so first of all, this is part of a playlist. You have to understand what the smoke grass ravens are in order to get any context for this video. Um, it's linked below. All right, so check out the smoke. Uh, get yourself an understanding of the smoke glass ravens. Let's talk about the smoke glass wolves. All right, so what are the smoke glass wolves? Smoke glass wolves is is my next experiment. Um, I think, and I'm asking you now: Should I do this? All right. So here's where I'm at. Right, right, right now. Um, I have a Dungeons and Dragons, a Dungeons and Dragons game that I run on Sunday nights, and we and basically the the structure. It's a very unusual structure. It's like you get uh, we run from six to ten p.m. on Sunday nights, and there's a, a A slot and a B slot. A, a slot is um, six to eight p.m. B slot is eight to ten p.m. Okay, and you you drop in and you get a season. You get four sessions to finish your season, okay? And um, and then you can do and you can do anything you want with your season. You can run Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. You can run any other tabletop role playing game you want. You can't run a story. Well, oh my gosh, I was about to say you can't run a storytelling game. That's not true. We just we actually ran. Wait, that's not that is true. We did run Ten Candles as a, as a one shot, right? So that's okay. We get through it. And the one shot was when we couldn't run Dungeons and Dragons, so that's okay, right? But we're focused on being a Dungeons and Dragons group. That's the focus I would like for the group, right? And it's been going really well. We had a huge debacle last year. We ran 28 sessions of Dungeons and Dragons in the same group with the, primarily the same people, um, and uh, and that game cracked in half. We 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 scattered to the winds. Then we recoalesced, and now we've been running really, really smoothly for a long time, right? But there's some there's some problems right now because of the, the seats at the table. Seats at the table have become a commodity. There are quite literally six seats at the table, and here's the and I I am a big part of the problem. I want those six seats to be filled with people who are seeking tier one dungeon mastery. Period. End of sentence. Right. Uh, I want them to all be tier one dungeon masters and be trying to hone their craft. I want this thing to be brown, blout, brown belts and black belts. You, you see what I'm saying? Like maybe go down to blue, uh, whatever is below, you know, brown, right? But like the top three martial arts belts, I want this table to be filled with people who are very, very serious about Dungeons and Dragons because I am seeking tier one dungeon, dra dungeon mastery and I want the people around me to do the same. And right now, no fault of their own. There, there, people. There's just confusion. There's like, hey, I'm here to play some D and D. Let's have fun, right? And at any other table in the world, they would have no other problem. But you know, they must have done something in a previous life. Just a joke. I'm an evangelical Christian. I don't actually believe in karma or reincarnation. But like, they did something to end up at my table. <laughs> like, and so, and I have great sympathy for them, right? So, here's the issue, right? So I tried to go forward and kind of make this in a democratic way, and it failed, right? Like, it was just, it, the smoke glass ravens were a complete and utter failure, right? Now, I owe something. I think that every dungeon master owes a tremendous amount to their players, right? They owe them respect, they owe them kindness, and they owe them, and they owe them tolerance, right? So I really want, I want to change the shape of the table, right? And I want, and I want to, and here's what I want. I want 51% Dungeons and Dragons. You can run whatever you want as long as the table, not even you, you can run, like, as long as the table is running Dungeons and Dragons at a rate of 51%, done, check, box done, right? Two, I want every single person at the table to be meeting a 75% attendance rate, okay? And then three, I want them, so I want... Dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons as 51% of the table play. I want 75% participation. It literally means, you know, in a two month, in a two month period, which that's the way it would count, you could miss, you could miss, routinely miss two sessions, right? As long as you're, you're participating at a level of three out of four sessions, you're good to go. Because, you know, people have busy lives. I get it, right? No problem. And then I think the last thing I want is I want a a very consistent communication through action that you're dedicated to the game, right? And what that means is you show up and you show out when you dungeon master and you show up and you show out when you play. 
you you run anything you want in your in your uh, you know in your four session season, right? And then the other DMs rotate in with whatever they want. And when you show up at the table, I do not want to hear. I didn't have chance. I didn't have a chance to prep this week. Like this should be on your mind, right? And and we're we're there right now. We're getting all of this for most players right now. But there are new people coming in, and and there is literally a starting to be a squeeze at the table, right? And so at this point, we've reached a point where I want to recraft, and I want to get dedicated dungeon masters at the table, right? And um, yeah, and that's where I'm at now. It would be very cruel and, um, and uh, frankly, a jerk move for me to just say, hey, you know, we're switching to this new model, right? But what, I, what I'm thinking about doing is saying, hey, welcome, every single person at the table. You are now, everybody at this table is now a guest of the Smoke Glass Wolves, right? Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to finish the current season arcs, right? Uh, there's two two season arcs running right now, and then I'm going to say, um, and at, and then at that point going forward, every single oh, and actually that's one last thing, every single person at the table is a dungeon master. No more players at the table. I do. I never want to. I never want another player at my table ever. Right? Like it's just, I've I've grown past players. I just don't have time for players, Dungeons and Dragons players. I want every single player at my Dungeons and Dragons game to be a top tier dungeon master. Because I, I have found that that is those are the best players by far. Like, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not a top tier DM, you can't be a top tier player, in my opinion. That's a new opinion, right? I was really hoping that you know, kind of like there would be the, this Dungeon Dragon player champion that would emerge. It never, it's never going to happen, right? Like, the best Dungeon Dragons players are simply top tier dungeon masters, right? Who are playing. That's that's my new opinion, right? So basically, I think what I would like to do is is go there and say, hey, you know, and in the next session say, hey, welcome. Uh, you are all now guests of the Smoke Glass Wolves. I would like, and I am the founder of the Smoke Glass Wolves, I'm looking for knights and squires. Knights are uh, people who have come in as squires and then completed one Dungeons & Dragons, one Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition arc. You are then a knight. And you will be able to have a vote at the table, right? And um, and then I'm also looking for squires who are people who are coming in, playing in other people's games until their rotation comes up, and then they complete a Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, um, you know, play arc, and there and you're in. And then, by the way, every single player who's currently at my table who's already fulfilled these, you're a knight now, right? If when you accept, when you accept. And then everything at this table will be decided uh, by discussion until there is a breakdown of unanimity, right? And then there will be a vote, and and the vote and here's how it rolls: uh, knights get a vote, squires do not get a vote, and the founder can overturn any any vote that you know if there's something that would break the structure of how the group was initially forged, right? Which would put me at the top, and that is incredibly hierarchical. And it would mean me saying, hey, I think I can fill every single seat at this table with dedicated dungeon masters around the board. And at this point, we are we are moving beyond being a fun d d table to being a Dungeons and Dragons, in my humble opinion, studio seeking dedicated practitioners of Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons, Dragon Ears, right? So that would give everybody a month to decide if they want to take up the role of Stormglass Wolf Knight, right? Under a founder, or if they're like, hey, you know, I'm going, I'm going to go find just a regular, game, a regular table, right? Like this, this is a bunch of nonsense. I ain't got no time for this. I don't like the flavor of this. I don't like. The seriousness of this, that is totally, totally their right, right? That's where I want to land, right? That's what I'm thinking, right? Because my energy just is increasingly not matching every player at the table. I will say this, uh, right now, we have six people who are attached to the game. 
four of them are firing on all cylinders, right? And I think, and I think I will get two of them to come through. I don't know which, right? And come through and be a smoke glass wolf knight, right? And I think I would have to fill, you know, fill in anybody who's like, nah, this is a bunch of nonsense, man. I'm checking out. You got too much attached to all this, right? Which would be a very, very fair uh, statement for them to say. And then, you know, the the table is recrafted and we recruit, right? And I have plans for recruitment, right? And I think I could fill the table with these restrictions. I tr- in the Philadelphia area, D and D is hot, and I think I could I could definitely fill it, right? That's my take. That's that's what I would like to do. Is it fair? Is it reasonable to give people the in, give them the out, give them time to think? Is all that tolerable and reasonable and kind, right? I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. Have a wonderful millennium.